What's up guys, it's Aaron Benzerum here for another video. I just want to take a quick second to thank everybody who has liked, subscribed, commented, messaged me. You guys are really motivating me to keep making videos and I'm really happy to help anyone Jiu Jitsu. Today I'm here with my good friend Ty. Lately on my channel we've been focusing on the half butterfly. I just posted a video on the basics and the control principles of the position. So if you don't understand that, I would definitely start there and check that in the link in the description. Today we're going to look at a basic butterfly sweep from the half butterfly because it is my favorite sweep from there. But we're going to have to break down the butterfly sweep as well. So it's kind of like a two part video. It's butterfly sweep slash half butterfly sweep. We're going to focus on it from the half butterfly. But the principles can be utilized also from a regular butterfly sweep. So let's get started guys. So I'm going to start here with tie and half butterfly. So guys, half butterfly is like a half guard where my opponent's over me, I have my frames, and I'm using a butterfly hook. In this case, my left leg is my butterfly hook. So assuming I have a strong half butterfly position, I'm going to keep my frame across his throat and on his bicep. Typically, if I'm framing, that means that I should have access to an underhook. So here, right? Once I have access to this underhook, I can theoretically immediately start to engage my butterfly sweep. So, let's turn. So I'm here and here, and I get my underhook. Right? One tip that I always like to give people when playing either butterfly guard or half butterfly is if you notice a very subtle detail that I put, is that as I got my underhook, my elbow is inside of my knee. My elbow's here. Now the reason that this is very important, especially if you're a smaller guy, is because when you have your underhook on the outside of your knee, Ty can come and whizzer your leg and your arm. So he can bring his, exactly, just like this. And he can smash that butterfly hook. This principle remains the same for butterfly guard. If I'm here and I engage, and I'm like this, he can do this and it can be really tough on my elbow and my knee. So even if he just gets my leg and shoves it down, that's, that, that can be a problem. So my elbow acts as a frame inside my knee, like this. Now he tries to smash me, it's really hard. It's also blocking the space he has available to wizard. So again, I'm here, right? It's much harder for him to smash me down now. So it's very important keeping the elbow on the knee. So for half butterfly, when I get my underhook, I'm here. You see how my elbow's parallel with my quad? Now. What I'm going to do is as I sit up into tie, I need to block his elbow. You can block the wrist, you can block the elbow, you can block anything. Think conceptually. I always tell people to think conceptually when I teach. So the idea is that I just have to block his posting hand. Somebody might be better at grabbing the wrist, somebody might be better at grabbing the elbow, somebody might be better at grabbing the material, but I need to block it. I'll explain why I do it and how I do it, and if you like it, you can run with it. If you're better with wrist control, you can run with it. So I get my underhook, right? I was framing, I'm able to pummel, I get my underhook, and now I'm ready to engage in my sweep. So I'm on my side, guys. If you notice, I'm on my right shoulder, and I'm on my side. I'm going to sit up into tie like this. Look at the positioning of my head. My head is with his shoulder. So I don't sit up with my head on this side. Here, Ty can put his weight forward, and it can be very hard to sweep him. So I have to beat his head. My head is also lower than Ty's. I don't want Ty's head lower than mine. So go lower than me. Anytime he's here, it's going to be hard to butterfly sweep. So I want to be here. Now, I'm going to block his elbow. And as I do so, I'm going to bring my bottom hook out. And I'm going to tuck my heel to my butt. Guys, one thing that you need to understand is the minute that this bottom hook is gone with somebody who's really quick, you need, you need to be extra active with your butterfly hook or they can start to pass. Some people won't do anything, some people will immediately start to move. So if he starts to try to move or something, I have to just keep this hook really active, right? But if I can do it all at once, so I'm here and here, I block his elbow, I bring my hook out, I'm gonna start to sweep him. So guys, one revelation that I've had with my butterfly sweep is that I wanna fall forward. So let's talk about a basic butterfly sweep. Biggest mistakes I see with a basic butterfly sweep 
with beginners is that they fall flat to their back. So that's number one. So what they do is they do this. And they're flat on their back. And it's very hard to sweep. So that's the biggest mistake I see there. So what we need to do is fall to our side. So I was always taught to fall to your right shoulder like this. Right? And as I do so, I'm going to use my toes, the ball of my foot here, to jack my opponent up and to let me elevate my hips. So let's see it without time. So let's say I have butterfly, I fall to my side. My right toes are the most important part because I'm going to keep my hook very active and I'm going to lift my hip. You see the space between my hip and the mat? That's what's going to elevate my opponent. Biggest misconception with the butterfly sweep is that it takes any strength from your leg or quad. So what I mean is that you have to be able to extend your hook. It doesn't take that at all. What you're doing when you're doing a properly executed butterfly sweep is you're loading your opponent's weight onto your hip. Your hook is just acting as like a carrying measure. So I'm just carrying his weight with my hook, but it's going on my hip. So for example, if I have Ty, let's say we're in this position and I fall, he's just loaded on my hook, right? I'm not extending it. It's very hard to extend here. What's gonna happen, keep your base just a little, what's gonna happen is as I lift my hip, He's still loaded, and I keep lifting. See how I move my foot? I move my foot, I move my foot, I move my foot, I move my foot. Now all of his weight is on his left side. At this point, now I can extend, and he's light, and I extend him. So again, I was in half butterfly. I got my underhook, elbow inside the knee. I sit up. As I sit up, I push him away with my hook. Right, so let's look at that. I'm here, right? I sit up and I push him away. I push him away, my head is lower than his head, it's on his shoulder. My right hook came out in the process, heel to butt, and now I grab his elbow. When I said I took it a step further, I go forward, not just to my shoulder. So traditionally, a good butterfly sweep, if you do this, it's fine, is to fall to your shoulder and go. Right, so I get him here. The thing that I've been doing lately is I almost rock up into my opponent and go forward, like this. You see the positioning of my body? My hips up, my foot, my toes are on the mat, and I'm going into him. All right, I go into him like this, and I almost take him down. Marcelo Garcia says that the butterfly sweep should almost be like a throw, and so it's my favorite sweep, and I go into my opponent. Worst case scenario, if he pushes back, I just fall to my shoulder like you're supposed to. So again, I'm here, half butterfly, framing, I get the underhook, I push him away as I sit up, I grab his elbow, pull it in, and then look, I go forward into tie. See my toes? You see how I'm upright at this point? Even if he resists a little, I just keep going forward, and I'm able to sweep him. So guys, I'm breaking down this. It's kind of a long-winded video, but there's a lot of details to the butterfly sweep to do it properly at a high level. So one other thing I want to mention is if I'm here doing my butterfly sweep, the preferred method that I like to use from half butterfly or butterfly, because the principles remain constant through both positions, is that I like to push his elbow inside, like this. Most of the butterfly sweeps that I use on white, blue, purple, even brown, and even some recreational black belts is here. Most of them, being honest. But if it's a really good guy, uh, like a guy with really good base or world-class pedigree, I need to bring his elbow underneath. Why? I can't give my opponent access to the underhook. It can be very difficult to pass somebody who's really good at leg pummeling, really good at hip pummeling, and moving their hip and having mobility if they have this underhook. But if you just bring it inside, so cup right on the outside of the tricep, it's very easy because now they don't have this hand. And then the, the constant uh, variables are that I fall forward or I fall to my shoulder like this. You see my position? My hook is very active. I'm wedging my knee into his ribs. My hook's going that way. And now I just start to come forward. Even if he posts on his left leg, I keep jacking him up, keep jacking him up, keep jacking him up, and ultimately sweep. So if somebody posts on their leg, I don't abandon my sweep initially. I start to circle by coming off my toes. So without tie, I'm doing this, one, two, three, four, 
and this is going to allow me to off balance him. So again, we'll go really slow. If I have his elbow planted and he starts to post on his leg, right? I'm here. I keep jacking, keep jacking, keep jacking. And I jack him up enough to off balance him. So the butterfly sweep is very tedious. It's very detailed. And a lot of people do it improperly. I have to utilize my hip to elevate my opponent not my hook, I have to keep my hook sticky. And all of these can be used from regular butterfly guard. So look, if I'm in butterfly guard, I get an underhook, right, I'm here. If he gets the underhook and he's good, it's gonna be tough. If I'm able to bring his arm in, that's better. And then I come forward, right? I'm coming into my opponent and I sweep. Real quick thing I like to mention, a lot of people love leg pummeling. One of the places that I really learned to leg pummel was from the butterfly sweep. Oftentimes you can capitalize on a transition before your partner establishes a guard and you can get your leg out and pass their guard. So I'm going to do the sweep and my left leg is going to pummel to knee on belly. This is a transition I use on a daily basis. So look, let's say I'm in half butterfly. I'm framing. I get the underhook pummel. I sit up and I extend my opponent. Right? This time maybe he has the underhook because it's a lower level guy or I'm not worried about it. And I just, I get this because he gives me the underhook. I push into him, sweep, and I'm going to pummel my left leg out, ready? And then I hook the outside of his hip to keep me away. So let's move back and do that. So again, maybe I'm just regular butterfly. I sweep, and I pummel my leg here. Just like this. All right? It's one of my favorite ways to pass the guard in the transition with the butterfly sweep. So... Guys, long-winded explanation of a butterfly sweep, but look, I always say it's better to learn it right from the get-go. So if you are a beginner and it's a lot of details, try to pick up the subtleties. If you're more advanced, try to focus on everything. Try to really fall to your side. Try to learn to elevate your hip. Try to keep an active hook, and you shouldn't feel stress on your quad. If you're feeling stress on your quad, you're probably doing it wrong because it shouldn't be too much exertion on your leg muscles. It should be you lifting him on your hip, right? So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, half butterfly sweep, butterfly sweep, whatever you want to call it. Oh, thanks so much.